If you've been watching my videos at all, or if you've been paying attention to my blog, either one, and if you've been doing both, uh, thank you very much. But in any case, you would know that my take on what's going on with the, quote, COVID-19 crisis, end of quote, is more than a little bit fishy, and you'll know that I don't tend to take the standard line on how all of that works. Uh, okay, so today is Sunday the 11th, and so you're watching Sunday's edition of the Daily Summation for the Kurtz Religion and Politics channels on YouTube and Rumble. So welcome aboard this morning, and hopefully you're doing well. I wrote an article, the one of the last ones that I did, uh, and the article was called 15 Days to Roll Them All, and I'm sure some people will immediately recognize the reference. Well, I sort of stole the stole the reference, not obviously word for word, but I stole the reference because I thought it was important for people to really think about what was going on in their world. And I think that there are a lot of people who are not, at this point, doing a grand job of that. <clears throat> One of the things that I think is amazing is that besides the fairly significant drop-offs that have occurred a couple of times now, the first time when coronavirus first made its way out into the world. So it built up to more than 15,000 deaths in a week, and it dropped down to uh, probably 4,000. I'd have to look at the numbers to be sure. And all of this happened by April or May, at the very latest June, we were down to three, three or 4,000 deaths a week. And we picked up again when places started to open back up, and of course everybody freaked out when that happened, though it was inevitable because the fact is the wear of masks, the uh, sheltering in place, the uh, social distancing and all the rest are only going to be so effective, and everybody knew that, and that's why when everything started out, we were in a place of, of 15 days to slow the spread, which is, which is where the 15 days to rule them all line came from, right? is this idea that, oh, in 15 days we'll, we'll start normalizing, right? And then people started to cry doom, even, if you, even though if you look at the numbers, you'll see a couple of really interesting things. One of them is, I'm pretty sure the state that I live in still has less than 1,500 deaths since February 1st of uh, 2020. And, if you, and another interesting fact is if you look at people below the age of 65, you'll still still find that the number of people who've died from the coronavirus for that, in that time, same time zone for the nation is less, I think, than 35,000. For, for eight months, for eight months, less than 35,000. Of course, of course, and, and I have to add this disclaimer because otherwise people will say, oh, you're heartless, oh, you're cruel, oh, all you care about is the t statistics, and that's not true. But of course, no one wants to see anyone die. No one wants to see anyone die of any condition, heart disease, uh, lung cancer, other kinds of cancers, uh, you know, all the various things that, that can take a life. Nobody wants to see that. But the reality is we accept, because there's not really a choice in the matter, that people die from those things. And so here's the thing. Though, well, there, there are a couple of additional things, actually, I should mention as I think about it, that are related to the fact that older folks, people over the age of 65, have died of this condition. And the first of these is that a couple of states, and I'm not going to get into who, badly mismanaged how they dealt with older folks, particularly people in nursing homes. And the result was more people definitely died as a result of that fact. You can dispute it all you want, but if you look at the numbers and if you look at the various reporting that's occurred, you'll see that this is true. Okay, there's, there's just no doubt of this. So making an argument to the contrary, I I fail to see how you could how you could do so. I will say that it appears that the death rates are higher in Demo in places that are dominated by Democrats, but I'll also say that the population in those places is higher and denser. In the, particularly in the places where the issues have occurred. And the result is that you would sort of expect that to be the case. So even though I would love to just blame Democrats, oh, you, all, you guys all did the wrong policies. I don't think their policies were great. 
I don't think anybody's policies were that great, but but the numbers in those areas are higher, whatever you say. And again, I I definitely can make the argument that it's because the density of population is also higher in those areas. There's another issue with regard to older folks, uh, and, and it is this, and it actually applies to older and younger folks as it happens, but it certainly does apply to older folks. On average, people having died, quote, from COVID-19, which is really a serious misstatement, have died as a result of contracting COVID-19 and having two or more of what are referred to as comorbidities. That means that they had something else, whether it was asthma, whether it was uh, COPD, whether it was uh, some other condition, right, pneumonia, and those conditions conspired together, if you will, to cause the person to die. Now, here's the thing. When, it, when we're talking about really young people, very few of them have died. In fact, the effect on them appears to be almost negligible, right? And of the people that have died, most of them, I believe, had other complications. And the point of all of this, right, the thing that I wrote the article that I wrote about is that whether you like it or not, it appears to me that for the most part, the numbers don't justify the actions being taken. So at that point, you have to ask yourself a question. So why are we doing all of this? Why are we doing all of this? And the more you think about that, the more you ask yourself the question, the more you have to come to the conclusion that one of a couple of things is true. And I don't believe one of them, uh, you know, and that is that health officials convinced people, sufficient numbers of people to hide away in their houses just because they were concerned about the potential for the pandemic getting worse. I think the numbers tell the story and the story they tell is no that's not how things are working if we just let the thing run its course and again i want to make it very clear there are certain groups certain sets of people for whom additional protection should be taken okay then i am pretty convinced what we'll see is that this thing will slowly but surely fade, ebb, and disappear, right? So the question again, why uh, we've taken all of these essentially draconian measures comes back to my mind. And I believe the answer is that there are people out there who have a vested interest in seeing that other individuals uh, do not... I, I won't say necessarily don't stay in positions of power, though I think that's sort of the end game. I believe their their desire is to make those people look horribly bad. I believe that they say, look, look, it's mismanaged, it's been mishandled, which I don't largely believe was true. I think initially there were issues, but I think most of those were put to bed pretty early. Um, but what they're actually, what they actually are saying is, not only did he mismanage manage things, but look, he's also caused the need for this excessively long lockdown. And as a result, um, the economic problems and so forth. And, uh, and I'll just tell you something. I went from not wearing a mask because they basically forced me to wearing a mask in certain places where I really, really ha saw, saw no reason for that to be the case. Okay, I just want you to know that. I saw no reason for that to be the case. Um, so I think that most people are complying with the various strictures that are in place with regard to this disease. I don't think it's fair to say that they're not. In the end, though, what it comes down to for me is the we need to end this. We need to end things. And the reason we need to do so is the current, quote, collateral damage that we're seeing as a result of what's going on, people dying of suicide, abuse that's occurring, people not being diagnosed for various kinds of diseases and so many more things, people not having jobs and not being able to afford to live, people living off the government and so forth. I think it's time for us to end 
most of these measures and let people go back to living normal lives. And that's what I would say is my final message. I think that there are people out there who are trying to make folks look bad. They don't care at what cost to the people at large. And I think that this needs to end and I think it needs to do so now. All right. I am basically out of time. Uh, today, uh, as I've said, is Sunday. So tomorrow will be Monday and you, lots of people count today's the start of the week. I do. Uh, so I hope you have a good week. I hope that your days are good in this coming week. I hope that you are allowed to enjoy the fall weather instead of being concerned by it. Uh, hopefully we are pretty likely we will see you again tomorrow. That will be Monday, the 12th of October, 2020. And, uh, I'll be talking about who knows what then probably again, another one of my blog posts. So it'll be pretty easy to figure out if you take the time to look at my blog. All right, you have a great day, and as I say, a great week, and hopefully we will see you tomorrow. Thanks for watching this video. Remember that you can like the video on YouTube, and you can give me a rumble on Rumble if you want to do that. Uh, of course, you can also subscribe to my channel on both YouTube and Rumble. The channel would be Kurt's Religion and Politics. Uh, if you want to see more of my content, you can go to various places. The first of those places would be my blog. That's blogs.kpschubert.com, blogs.kpschubert.com. If you want to follow me on uh, Twitter, um, parlor, or minds.com, you can look for my handle. I am at kpschubert. That is at k-p-s-h-u-b-e-r-t. Uh, you can also see my Facebook page. That also is Kurt's Religion and Politics. Uh, I have, obviously, a YouTube and a Rumble account. Uh, my page, uh, my uh, channels on those accounts, pages, channels, whatever you want to call them, is Kurt's Religion and Politics. Um, I have uh, also, uh, if you want to support me, a Patreon account. I am Kurt's Religion and Politics there. Thank you for looking at my stuff. Remember, you can subscribe. Remember, you can click notifications on the YouTube to make sure you're notified for, uh, for new content. Uh, again, thanks for coming to visit my channel. Thanks for watching this video, and you have a great day.